everybody. Welcome back to Finding Your Voice, OMES's podcast about the impact of the five voices on our workforce. I'm Krista Helfrey. And I'm Kay Thompson. And we're joined today with some members of our OMES team. We have Anish, Brandy, and Bill. Thank you guys for joining us and welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So when you uh, took the original five voices uh, training, they told you, you know, you're all of the five voices, but which uh, is your foundational voice and what tendency do you relate to most? Yeah. So uh, my results came out as creative pioneer. It was like a 1% difference. And some days I feel more creative, some days more pioneer, but uh, I'll just stick with creative pioneer for now. And what tendency of those voices do you really relate to? Ooh, if I have to just pick one and only one tendency that's really in common is anything is possible. Create both creatives and pioneers invest in that. And so if you know me, my leadership style, my projects, you'll know that all I care about is the outcome. I don't care about the details of how to get there. <laughs> Even if it means I have to do like 48 hours of work straight through, if it's an outcome that I want, then that's what I want to do. So anything is possible. When I did mine actually was a guardian connector. So um, the reason why I feel like I'm more of a guardian and a lot of things make sense because a lot of my life I was always like, well, why are we doing that? And if it didn't make sense in my head, I absolutely could not learn it. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Let's revisit the steps. Where are we going? What's the end result? Because I'm not getting it. So it just made a lot of sense when I did the uh, testing to see that I am a guardian is that I'm always looking for like, uh, steps and ways to do things and put it in a logical form that everybody can understand it. And I think I connect more with being a connector is because um, I think sometimes guardians tends to be a lot rigid, like in the box more, but my personality is more a little bit out of the box. So it's like, okay, yeah, we can learn this, but we can do it in a way that everybody can understand and maybe have fun while we're doing it. So I've taken the five voices three times starting in 2017 and wow. I've consistently been a pioneer guardian. And um, I can absolutely uh, relate to what uh, everybody shared in terms that anything is possible in the logic of things. Um, I uh, think one of the areas that I would focus on is efficiency, um, which has some great benefits in terms of getting things done quickly. And I can also cut people off when it's not efficient, so <laughs> yeah. Have you seen some positive impacts on your teams at OMES based on the five voices and kind of going through that learning experience together? Uh, I would say so. So um, I'm part of both HCM and IS. And so the teams that I see this impact on would be the HR team who helps out IS and then of course IS itself. And the impact that I'm seeing is that people are really getting to understand each other better, whereas before, um, the lack of understanding it came from not understanding how foundationally we have these differences, these different uh, lenses through which you can view the world. And so when people understand that better, they tend to come from a place of, okay, let me think in this person's shoes, rather than, oh, I don't understand that or I don't agree with that right off the bat. So it improves relations really well. I think uh, within my team, so I work for EGID, the pharmacy team, and it's only three of us. Oh, wow. So it's a very intimate group and we have a large responsibility uh, with maintaining you know, 80,000 members across the state. So we have a large responsibility. So after taking the five voices, you know, my director's a pioneer, I'm a guardian, and my other coworker is a nurturer. And those two kind of tendency to be like on opposite ends of the spectrum when you think about five voices. So uh, me and the pioneer would just be in meetings and we would just be like tugging along doing stuff. And then we would be like, oh, well, wait a minute. Let's get you involved because you know, they're the quietest voice in the room. So it's like, okay, what do you think? So I think it had um, a way of us taking a step back and saying, well, let's get you involved. Let's, what do you have to say? Let's give it a minute. Let's slow down and regroup and get her impact as well because it's just as important as ours, but maybe she's just not saying it right now. So I think it just helped our communication style and understand each other better. And how do you think she reacted to that? Oh, kind of I, inclusivity. Good. I think she, and her actually her second one is a guardian. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, she was okay with that, but uh, she's more of putting more feeling into like, you know, the processes and we're just like, no, this is how we're going to do it. This makes more sense and things like that. So um, I think she really enjoyed that we slowed down more. 
um, even today in a meeting, I was like, well, Amy, you have to make this decision. And she was just stood there for a minute and we're like, yes, you're gonna make the decision. <laughs> so I think she, she, uh, she enjoys that we're getting her back involved. That's awesome. So I work with a lot of different teams. I am in the IS uh, uh, department and I'm embedded in human services. So I work with folks on the IS side and I work with lots of different groups on the human services side. And um, I haven't been there very long, so I've got a lot, lot, to, a lot to learn. But when it comes to the, the five voices um, in teams, I actually like to start with using it as a mirror for myself and understand myself a bit more. Because I think we can all join a team and point out what's good or bad about the other folks on the team or how to engage, but I need to start with myself. Um, so uh, I took the description of what a pioneer is and I you know, crossed some things out that I didn't think applied, but then I, I actually asked people who know me and say, okay, what is this really me and what do I need to do? What, what should I do with this type of feedback? And then that helps me better prepare for engaging others. Also then understanding the other four voices um, that are dominant for others, um, I can, it helps me identify why, my, why I may get frustrated. So a creative person may want to come up with all kinds of ideas for much longer than the time I have allotted in my head that we should do. Mm -hmm. And so instead of taking that personally, or frankly me making it personal for them, is, is to understand that's their default the way they think and respect that. Um, and, um, and leverage that to become a better team because we absolutely do, um, we have better teamwork and more output and more capability when we have diversity of thought and diversity of, of voices, so. Absolutely, very yeah. well put. That sounds a, a lot like um, another part of the training is know yourself to lead yourself. And so that kind of helps you be a better team player, be a better leader. And um, it sounds like you definitely recognize like your nemesis voice. And can you, can you uh, kind of explain how working with your nemesis voice, you've learned to, to do that more efficiently and more effectively? Well, so um, I didn't know I had a nemesis voice first, right? And then I learned it's nurture. And I like to think I'm a pretty nurturing person. Um, but it, it's good to know that one, my, my strength as a pioneer uh, also has some weakness to it. Um, and so what really co what it comes down to is I uh, recognize I need to be more compassionate as opposed to focused on the outcome and it, it getting there efficiently is um, that people contribute to those outcomes and knowing that um, uh, a nurturer would be more compassionate. That's, that's something that I, uh, I work on. So it's good to know um, that I can get engage people on. Right on. Brandy, do you have the same kind of experience? Yeah, I think, well, mine is, uh, my name is voice tends to be a nurturer because um, um, I think like in business or uh, in work area, we should take the feeling out of it. And you know, nurturers wants to be a little more touchy feely, more involved with their emotions. What does everyone think? And I'm more of kind of a, a black and white type of person. What, what does the rule say? Or what did we used to do? Or how can we make this better? That will ultimately help everyone. But when it comes to bu business, it's not all emotional um, feelings and okay, well, you know, it's not a team effort. It's just what is exactly needs to be done at the time that needs to be done. And, um, but it's having a nurturer on my team in such a, a intimate environment has helped me become more patient and understanding and uh, slow down and able to listen to how this is affecting them and maybe other people versus just saying, this is black and white. Uh, there's no gray in this. Right. And then, Nish, what is your nemesis voice? Mine is guardian. Um, so as much as I believe that anything is possible and I don't care about the details to get there, that, that's why guardian is my nemesis <laughs> voice. Cause they're so yes. good at that, right? Coming yes. in with those checks. Um, really, I recognize that in myself that if I want to um, develop any part of myself that will make me a better professional, it should be that. And what I like about the five voices system is that uh, I'm a true believer in mentorship, so I can go out there and find guardians that I get along well with, and I can try to learn from them and build a relationship with them. And the you know one of the first ones that comes to mind is on Sophie Parker on Sophie's team, Zach Parker. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, straight up guardian. We get along well. His strengths are something that I rely on so much, and. I think maybe, hopefully, I get to rub off on him as you. So it is a mutual exchange there. But yeah, I would uh, unofficially consider him 
a mentor in that aspect. Uh, so, Zach, if you're listening, there's your compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of segues into our next topic, which is strengths and weaknesses. The Five mm-hmm. Voices kind of gives you a list of, like, these are potential strengths, which do you identify with? Um, but then you, if you're leading, then your team, you can kind of notice those strengths and weaknesses and assign projects and tasks accordingly. Not because everyone can't do them, mm-hmm. but because some people it's going to take less energy Mm -hmm. and then the overall product's going to be better in the end. So have you had any experiences like that on your teams? Yeah, uh, very much so. So I'll give you an example within human resources. uh, Some people are very much guardians by nature and some people are very much nurturers. And then I think there's me and one other person who were creative pioneers. And so what we do is Whenever you're in HR, you kind of have to do a little bit of everything. <laughs> you, you have to uh, manage the people side of people and then the business side of people. And then uh, try to do it in a way that is sustainable and that will also meet organizational outcomes, both now and in the future. So we can divide up some of our responsibilities by voices in terms of, okay, you be accountable for making progress here. You be accountable for making progress here. but. What we do, we take it back to the team in the end and say, okay, here's the direction we're going and what do we think of collectively? So in that way, we, you know, mitigate the stress levels and we work more efficiently, more collaboratively. I would say that, like, one of the things that happened within our department right off the bat, as soon as I got there, is that they had all these lists of projects. It was like, oh, we're working on this, we're working on this, and I was just like, okay, so every meeting we would have a, a, a internal staff meeting and it'd be like okay well what are we doing and i was like that's too much for us to keep up with so i immediately created a spreadsheet of all our projects and who's assigned to the task and where are they at where are they doing where are they at the, de- the timeline and and just everything to keep it straight because i was just like this is too much for us to keep writing down and then we have to go back in our notes and say oh yeah this is what's happening so I created like this structural way to keep everything organized and then it went from a straight spreadsheet to now we use it on planner, uh, which is more efficient. And within that, we learned that uh, my coworker is more of a uh, nurturer. So sometimes we have to deal with um, external members and clients and that's more of her strength to reach out and call them and be like, oh, okay, well, you can't get this. Well, let's help you out with this versus I am more of like, well, they couldn't do that, figure that out. And like, they can just ask the pharmacist two more questions. So <laughs> it was, you know, those type of things right there is just how you kind of develop the strengths and weaknesses. And my director is more of like the overseer of making sure that you know, everything is getting done and everybody's meeting their responsibility level. But that was kind of the first things we kind of noticed, like who's more uh, organized at maintaining all the projects versus who can handle our customer service and member friendly um, requests. I think um, the five voices assessment and, and sharing that within a team is a starting point, but it's not necessarily the finishing point. It's a way to open up and, and see each other in, in a light and uh, in, a, in a new light, but then it's uh, the key thing to me is then continuing to listen and um, if, uh, to people and what their strengths are. I like the play to your strengths model and the yes, we all have a role and a title, but those to me can be secondary because once you're as one team, you can then um, work in a way, well, one team with trust and low ego, you can work in a way that people can play to their strengths and you can trust that other, everybody's going to do their part. And of course, things are going to you know surprise you and go wrong and, and that kind of thing. But that's how you, if you keep listening, um, that you'll know how things are going and you can adapt. So um, I, I'd say uh, Brandy's got some great points. I, I'm kind of probably less structured in how I approach that and just more listen as opposed to know what uh, everybody's voice is. So yep. absolutely. One of the fascinating things uh, during Five Voices training, they were talking about present thinkers and future thinkers, and um, Let's see, it's guardian and uh, nurturer are present thinkers and the other three are future thinkers. Um, I think that explains a lot where people are in the moment where, or other people are really out there, you know, obviously. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, exactly. So like Brandy, within your team, you have the pioneer and then you're the guardian and there's a nature, nurturer. 
um, you guys are present thinkers versus your leader is a future thinker. Has that ever run into any issues and, and how do you guys work through that? Um, I think the me being the why person helps me understand the his his future thinking. So it's like, you know, he'll say, he call it the vomit. This is just what he calls it. <laughs> Sorry, but that's what he calls it. Let's just get it all out there, the vomit. So he'll say, this is all the stuff we're gonna do. And I'm like, okay, we can do those things, but why do you wanna do those things? How are we gonna do those things? When are we gonna do those things? So I'm the one that kind of goes in there and breaks them down to say, well, that's good vomit, but mm -hmm. let's try to you know organize it in a way that we can really meet those goals and we do that within our uh, strategic plan nice. so we have a strategic planning meeting that um, I was like okay if these are all the things you want to do let's organize it in a way that we can talk about it every two weeks to see if we're meeting those goals so I, I think I'm kind of the structure of the of the department and then Amy will come back because she's been there the longest and say and tell us like the past what they did in the past and how it's evolved to now and how it could possibly change into that um, but she's kind of like our historian I would say because she's been there the longest so um, that has helped us just him being a future thinking and me not really just kind of calming the future down a little sure. bit devil's in advocate a way. just yes. to make sure <laughs> yes. exactly so I, I think um, what I have to do is to recognize the strengths that of course I don't have and leverage them but in order to do that I have to try to find in myself where do I appreciate the present thinking how do I apply that and so what I find is with the creative style although the creative style is future thinking a lot of our detailed work we pay attention to in the present so like a lot of creatives have artistic hobbies whatever that might look like for me um, graphic design is so fun and when you do that you're, it's a very present-minded practice so uh, one of the things that I like to explain to people whenever I get to talk about my leadership style is that I'm a design thinker so I apply this creative design thinking to everything I do and that naturally accounts for present thinking and future thinking so in that way I get to take a small part of me and use that to connect to someone who can take it bigger and do what they do really well with that present thinking. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Bill, what about you? I'm not as nearly as capable as Anisha is, so I can tell you that. <laughs> um, so um, I'm, I'm a future thinker. In fact, I would say in my personal life, it's, uh, it's hard to be in the moment at times because I'm future thinking. Uh, fortunately, in my work, uh, um, my customer always wants something sooner rather than later. Um, so that's a, a natural balance I have. Um, and uh, we have folks on the team um, who are also, you know, we've got to do this quickly, that kind of thing. And so um, it, it actually works very well in that I can recognize, yes, we need to move quickly, but also we need to be able to support this long term. We need to not move the cheese of our ultimate customer, Oklahomans, or internal to human services very frequently. So let's, let's do move quickly. Let's think long term about how this is going to work. And then another facet of that is, yes, we can move quickly and there's maybe a high cost to that, but how do we uh, maintain the financial efficiency in the long run? Uh, so it's, it's really kind of an, an integrated balance in that the customer is, is ready to go and we've got to think big picture and long term. So works out w well most of the time. Sure. Provides uh, great services that way. I yes. uh, hope to, yes. Absolutely. And well, that's kind of what you touched on earlier with having your nurturer interface with customers more because yeah. they're coming like, this is a frustrating topic and I don't understand it. I don't want to have to understand it. I just want someone to help me. Right. And so she can cater to that and then it's a better experience for them. It, absolutely. That's awesome. I will say that what I like now is that the way that we're using it at OMES is we're using it in the right ways for productivity. Yes. The wrong ways is to, you know, put yourself in a box and say, I am this stereotype and I'll never develop and I'll judge everybody that way too. Sure. But the way that we're using it here at OMES is more of here's my starting point and here's other starting point. Let's leverage each other's strengths and we can still develop. I got chills. <laughs> <laughs> They're multiplying. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> with your experience in them so far and working with your teams and even yourself on that self-awareness, what do you think in the workplace has been the biggest value of the five voices? I would say just um, understanding how other people operate and think and being able to respect them in that 
I think that's what opened the door up the most for the five voices is that we might all be different, but it doesn't mean that we have to treat each other differently. We can learn to respect it. My voice, I might not be the loudest one in the room. I might be the one that least likely to say something in the meeting, but it doesn't mean that I um, devalue anything that's going on or I deserve to be devalued or anything like that. I think it, it just opened up an opportunity that everybody has a voice and everyone's different and it's okay to be that way and you can shine in whatever voice it is. Um, and I think it gives you like a boast of confidence, like, hey, I'm a guardian, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what are you? And Absolutely. it's the conversation starter when you go to other OMES's uh, events and it's like, hey, what is your voice, you know? So I voice. agree with Brandy. Um, I think one of the things, because I work with a lot of different teams, one of the things I appreciated about it is, is an accelerator to get to know people. Mm -hmm. So when you form a team yes. and you know you have something to go get done, um, you don't have much time, right? It feels like, okay, we need to come together as a team very quickly. And so it is a way to um, establish a level of rapport and openness. And then from what flows from there, if, if you listen and you're interested, is to get to know people more. And the more you can develop a sense of teamwork and trust, the more capable you can be. So um, I, one of the things I appreciate is that it, it opens that door and makes things go faster. Yeah, I would say I would echo what they've both said and add on that. It gives you, again, this starting point of understanding another person. So maybe that's a coworker that you need to get along better with. So you learn each other's strengths, you mitigate stress for both of you, and you're able to collaborate better. That's one way. Maybe, you know, you're a supervisor and you learn your employee's starting point and your starting point, And you can say, okay, here are some ways we've disagreed in the past. This is why. Here's how I think we can do it better. And if you, um, in general, are a member of leadership and you're wanting to inspire that in others and see others grow as leaders in their own right, what is their own right? Well, you can talk to them about their strengths and say, okay, you know, pioneers have the reputation of being leaders. They're not the only leaders. What does a nurturer look like as a leader? What does a creative look like, a connector look like? And try to help people be the best versions of themselves in the way that they already are. It's really nice to see that. I think at the end of the day, the five voices is, is a like a massive communications tool because mm -hmm. it really helps you better, like you were saying, kind of, oh, where they're coming from. And I also know how to speak to you mm -hmm. and you end up speaking the same language. So I think it's great. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate the insight that you guys brought from your team, small and large. And we hope that you enjoyed this podcast today. Please find this episode on all the platforms.